Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Hope everybody's having a good weekend. Today, I'm gonna take a quick look at the four stocks I'm thinking of buying this upcoming week. Like most of you, I put money to work every single week, so I have to find either new investments or some old investments to continue to add. And this is pretty much how I've been growing my portfolio to make it a six-figure portfolio right now. So if it's been working in the past, why stop now? So like I mentioned, today we're gonna take a quick look at four stocks. I'm gonna tell you why I like them right now, why I like them at these price. I'm also gonna share what kind of tier level they are in my portfolio. If this is your first time here, make sure to hit the subscribe button and let's get started. All right, so the first company we are gonna take a quick look at is DraftKings. I've done a few videos on their earnings on the recent acquisitions and some recent moves that DraftKings has entered into in the past week or so. And it's, it's, I believe it's made me a bit more bullish on this company. So DraftKings is coming in and it's potentially becoming a tier two stock in my portfolio. So right now we can see in the past day, the stock is down about 2%. In the past uh, 52 week from its 52 week, the stock is down roughly 25.4%. And it's currently sitting at a market cap of $21.5 billion. Let me talk to you guys about why I believe DraftKings is, is becoming a stronger. I want to make it a stronger player in my portfolio. So first of all, DraftKings with their marketplace, this is kind of entering into the NFT and to the digital world. And I believe this is going to bring new users to the platform and it's going to allow DraftKings to kind of cross sell to uh, to those users. Right. The second thing is I do believe this acquisition that was announced August 9th of 2021 is very bullish for DraftKings. Obviously, at the end of this episode, I'm also going to take a quick look at some of the price action right now. Maybe those could be some yellow flags in forms of some of these stocks and talking about valuations. Um, but DraftKings acquisition of Golden Nugget on online gaming, I think it's another smart move. This is adding more users to their iGamification division. And this is a division or, or, or part of their business that needs to grow and provides a good portion of revenue so DraftKings is expanding like i said doing really well in sports betting it's expanding into the iCommunification world and now it's kind of entering into that digital nft marketplace as well so it's bringing i believe it's just very innovating in the type of products it brings and the type of users it's trying to grab into its platforms and its most recent earnings they did announce a 297 percent year-over-year pro forma revenue we have to remember right same time last year though a lot of sports stuff were kind of closed off um so it, strong revenue growth and i still anticipate strong revenue growth for DraftKings in the future uh, but i don't think we will see these kinds of levels right just because where this business was at same time last year so that's the first stock this all right so the second stock i want to take a quick look at is crowdstrike this is in the cybersecurity, another market i'm very very bullish on but before we go any deeper let's take a quick listen to today's sponsor a great reason why i'm able to provide so much content to you guys for free i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video the motley fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels you guys know i love finding new investing tools and resources to help me scout out new growth stocks and right now i have a discount for one of my favorite services the fool offers through the motley fool stock advisor services you get access to ton of expert stock picks every month you'll get two new picks that are aimed at growing your wealth and to help you realize your financial goals stock advisors average stock picks have done amazing returns if growing your money is something you like to do more of this year you can visit fool.com slash jose naharo or click on the link below for access to my special offer and decide if the stock advisor is right for you thanks again to the motley fool and now on to today's video so crowdstrike right now ended the day about 0.8 percent we can see from its 52 week high the stock is really up there right it hasn't really seen much of a pullback down about nine percent again I, we're going to talk about valuations in a bit that might be one of the big yellow flags for crowdstrike regardless i'm more of a dollar cost averaging i put money to work every single week so sometimes that helps me out with some of these valuation thoughts so crowdstrike right now uh we we seen right cyber attacks are happening almost on i, I want to say every single week we hear some crazy news here in the united states of some superstore something being affected due to some cyber crime so i do believe the overall and, and how things are getting smarter right smarter homes smarter applications smarter enterprise more things in the cloud i do believe the overall cyber security market is needed more than ever smart cars right smartphones everything smart tvs um, so we always need that type of defense within the system uh, so crowdstrike so just the overall cyber security market i am bullish on uh, crowdstrike they are expected to announce their earnings on august 31st uh so that's still some time about two weeks from now tuesday after the market closes like i mentioned crowdstrike provides cloud delivery endpoint and cloud workload protection 
They leverage their AI platform, which is the CrowdStrike um, Falcon platform, to protect customers against cyber attacks on endpoints and workloads on or off the network by offering visibility and protections across enterprise. So right now, CrowdStrike, if we take, like I said, their earnings are coming up. But if we take a quick look at their historical earnings, this is one growing at strong levels, right? Revenue in the mo in the first quarter grew 70% compared to the same time last year. Another thing, annual reoccurring revenue grew 74% strong numbers there if we take a look at the customers they're growing they grew about 82 percent on net new subscription customers compared to the same time per last year 82 percent and finally the last thing i want to talk about is crowdstrike subscription customers have adopted four or more modules so out of all these subscriptions guys 64 percent of all subscribers use at least four models 50% use at least five models, 27 use at least six or more. So those are huge numbers. It shows that all the products that they offer in this platform are kind of sticky and it drives more users to grab into it. The third company we're actually going to take a quick look at, third and fourth are two players in the fintech market. And this is these next two stocks are ones I don't have in my portfolio right now. And I still haven't decided which one of these two I am going to add. Um, but the first one is going to be SoFi. SoFi ended the day about 14.15% today. I recently just did an episode on their earnings. Make sure to take a quick look at that. Where I took a look at some of the yellow flags. I want to say yellow flags. Yellow flags aren't necessarily bad. Are just things that, hey, keep a closer eye on. Um, but SoFi dropped 14% uh, after reporting earnings. So definitely a sticky, uh, I want to say a sticky situation for maybe some investors Overall, looking at their earnings presentation, I wouldn't say much has changed, right? I mean, uh, in, in forms of original de thesis, this is a company growing members at high levels, 113% compared to the same time last year. Galileo accounts are doing good. We can see overall revenue is up on adjusted net revenue, up 74% compared to the same time last year. This is their fourth consecutive quarter of adjusted EBITDA profitability. And for the full year of 2021, they are still expecting about 58% year-over-year revenue growth. So this is a high growth company. For those not familiar with SoFi, they are pretty much a one-stop shop for all your personal financial needs, invest, personal loans, student loans, money, home loans, get credit cards, private student loans, insurance, credit card, and auto loan refinancing, right? So they're pretty much I want to say if once you get into one of their services, I think it just becomes a very sticky wheel where you have to, where you just start using more and more of their platforms. So this is one I'm definitely super interested in on right now. Uh, like I mentioned, the stock price right now has dropped down to almost $15. When we take a quick look at technicals, I'm really liking the price point it's at right now. The fourth stock, and this is again, it's going to be either between SoFi or this one, PaySafe. PaySafe is definitely at a whole different level than SoFi, even though they're both kind of fintech different markets, right? I mean, SoFi is hitting more consumers, more actual people, whereas PaySafe is more of a online payment platform, which are meant for enterprises or so different businesses, even though they're both in the fintech market. PaySafe, we're going to see is not a high growth company that all there's even though they're in the same market, so much difference between the two. So PaySafe right now dropped about 6.25% in, in the last trading day, uh, which was Friday. And we can see from its 52 week high, the stock is down about 47% currently with a market cap of $7.3 billion. So if we take a look, PaySafe, one of the reasons I'm kind of bullish in this company right now is they're the global leader in iGaming. This is stuff like sports bet, um, sports betting, online casino, lottery, esports, and fantasy sports, right? Now kind of go pushing back into my first stock was DraftKings. So I do believe these two are kind of, uh, they kind of work well with each other. If I'm bullish in DraftKings, it could mean I'm very, very bullish in PaySafe and this overall payment platform as well. We can see in North America in their most recent earnings, and they are expected to release earnings on Monday before the market opens. 66% year-over-year revenue growth in the North iGamification, North America iGaming world, right? And right now they're only live in about 15 states. So it's huge, huge potential. Like I mentioned, this is not a huge growth story. This one's only expected to grow for the full year of 2021, around 10% on its high end. Who knows what guidance will be on the upcoming earnings? Like I mentioned, earnings will be August 16th of 2021 before the market opens. Another great thing about PaySafe right now on August 2nd, they did acquire Pago Efectivo, which is a Latin America e-cash business. For those that don't know, PaySafe kind of has e-pay e or e-PaySafe cash 
which is kind of like digital currency voucher. So a, a lot of these places uh, outside of like North America, they have uh, they have places where a lot of people don't have credit cards or some form of online banking, but they still like to buy stuff online and still like to pay for stuff online. Um, but how can you do that without a credit card, without some type of debit card whatsoever? So there's this called eCash where you go to a store that kind of has vouchers, you give them cash and now you get like a digital receipt, which now you can use for online payments and stuff like that. Uh, so pay safe to acquire power Efectivo, that's that eCash business in Latin America is overall accelerating that expansion. Uh, so now let's take a quick look at uh, their overall technicals. Like I mentioned, DraftKings will be a tier two, CrowdStrike expected to be a tier two, SoFi and PaySafe, I wouldn't consider them tier three, but I wouldn't consider them tier two. So it will be somewhere between the 2.5, at the moment, not as a big position as I would want to build up in the first two, um, but not a super, super small position either. DraftKings right now, definitely not overextended from its moving averages. Obviously, we have seen better buying points. Again, for me being able to do dollar cost averaging, it helps out with sometimes maybe not picking in at those great value, at those kind of moments where we might not get for some time. CrowdStrike, another thing, right? It used to be overextended. Right now, it's kind of pulled back. I do believe a good portion of the risk has been eliminated for me to time to start to dollar cost average again and build that position. PaySafe and SoFi. Now, these are two that have really pulled back in some strong support levels. Here's SoFi, here's PaySafe. So like I said, all of them are not overextended. Obviously, volatility is still here. Stock prices can continue to drop down. But I believe for me, dollar cost averaging, now is the perfect time for me to grab into some of these stocks right now. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Take care, have a good night, and see you next time.